right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a program that will convert between inches and centimeters. I've already got NetBeans open, so there's a button up here we can click that will allow us to create a new project. Uh, we're going to select Java Application and then click Next. And then it's going to ask us to enter a name for this project. Well, I'm going to convert inches into centimeters, so that seems like a good enough name, so inches to centimeters. And then the next part right here says project location. So I want to save this somewhere that I can come back to it and access it. So for you, if you're doing it for my class, of course, you probably want to save it on your H drive. So if you'll navigate to the right drive, it'll create a project called inches to centimeters in that folder. Okay. So I click Finish, and it's going to set up a project for us. Okay, cool thing about NetBeans is it creates a default file to get us started. Now, some of this code here is not actually code. These are what's known as comments. So anything that is kind of grayed out is just here to tell us what the code is doing. I and mean, it's really not going to be compiled, it's not going to be executed. So we're just going to get rid of it because we don't need it. Everything we're going to be doing will be inside these two brackets here for now. Okay, so we want to create a program that will convert inches into centimeters, right? So I'm going to create a comment just to tell us that. Um, this program converts inches into centimeters. You might think, well, that's kind of obvious because that's the name of the project, whatever. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to ask the user to enter a number of inches, okay? So if I write the code system.out.println, this is going to display some text to the user. And so anything I put inside these two parentheses here, inside the quotes, um, is going to be the text that is displayed. So I want to say, hi, welcome to the inches to centimeters converter. If I can spell. And then I can have another line. I mean, if I wanted, I could keep typing text inside there, but I just didn't want to make it too long here. So I'm creating another line that will print out Please enter a number of inches. So let's just run the program and see where it's at. So our output window is down here. And it says, hi, welcome to the inches to centimeters converter. Please enter a number of inches. But then it says build successful, total time one second, whatever. That means that the program is already done it completely finished. It didn't actually wait for us to enter anything. See, if I try to enter something here, it won't let me. That's because there's nothing else in the program telling the program to wait and to use the input and do what we want it to do, right? So let's keep working on this. As soon as we say, please enter a number of inches, we need to tell the program to wait for them to enter that number, okay? This is the second half of an interactive program. The first half is allowing the computer to interact with the human, which is what we just did. We programmed the computer to talk to the human and tell them some instructions. The second half is getting the human to talk back to the computer. So that's called input. So in order to do input with Java, we're going to set up something called a scanner up above the code that we already created. This object, we can name it whatever we want. We can name it my scanner. We can name it. Uh, Mr. Soderquist scanner, we can name it S. I'm going to name it S. It's a very easy to type. And then I'm going to say equals new scanner. And then parentheses. And inside those parentheses, I have to pass in the word system.in. So this is saying create an object that allows me to get input, and the type of input I want you to receive is going to be keyboard input. That's what the system.in means. We're going to take keyboard input inside of this window here. And the red squiggly lines here are telling us, hey, 
I don't know what a scanner is. That's what NetBeans is trying to tell us. So click on this little exclamation point here, and it gives me some suggestions. It says, well, you could add the import for it. I mean, that turns out to be exactly what we want to do. So we just click that. And now, if you notice up here, we have the line import java.util.scanner. NetBeans is happy now because we imported it. Now it knows what a scanner is. Okay. So all we did here is we created a special object that will allow us to receive input. Anytime you're playing with keyboard input, you're going to have to create one of these. Once it's created, you can get as much input as you want from it. So in this case, I only need to ask the keyboard for one thing, right? I only need to ask them to input the number of inches. So I'm going to say s.next. This isn't quite what I want, but I want to show you what this does. So if I click run, here, now it's finally waiting for me to enter some input. Okay, so that is obviously not at all what we want. I mean, it's good that it waits for some input, but we didn't actually use the input and it wasn't the right kind of input. And so instead of just having it do s.next, we need to take in the input and save it in a variable so that we can do some calculations with it. So I'm going to create a variable, and it needs to be a number variable. So a number data type might be an int, which is used for whole numbers, because int is short for integer. Or it could be a double, which is used for decimal values. And I think I'm going to use this one, because it's possible that somebody will enter uh, a number of inches that has a decimal in it, like 10 and a half inches, right? Okay, so I'm going to say double, and then I'm going to give it the name inches, and then I'm going to assign it to equal whatever comes in from the scanner. Except, as you can see, there's a red squiggly line under everything, and if we hover over it, it's because it says, hey, string can't be converted to double. What that's really telling us is this half of the assignment is a double data type, but this half produces a string data type, which is like text, like somebody's name or a message or something, right? So in order for this to take in from the keyboard a number data type and therefore give the variable inches a number data type, we need to say next double instead of next. And now that makes the red squiggly lines go away and it's not yelling at us anymore. Okay, so now if we run it, you'll notice we can still enter whatever we want but it gets really mad if I don't enter a number. It says, hey, that was an input mismatch exception, which means you didn't type in the right type of input. So if I run it again, just to show you, I could enter an integer, and it works. I could enter a double, like a decimal value, and it works, okay? We're still not quite converting it into centimeters yet, though, right? So now that we've got that value saved, whatever the user enters, we need to change that into centimeters and then display the result. So this is the easy part. We could create another variable called centimeters and set it to equal whatever the conversion factor is. So if I want to convert between centimeters and inches, I just have to know that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. That means however many inches you have, you multiply that by 2.54 and you get your number of centimeters. So I can say inches multiplied by 2.54 and that will be stored in the variable centimeters. And just to prove that to you, let's print out what centimeters now equals. And I'm also going to leave a little unit marker here, CM, so that we know that it's centimeters. Okay, so let's run it. And we're going to enter, let's say, 10 inches, and we get 25.4 centimeters. Let's try my actual height. So I'm 74 inches tall, which is 187.96 centimeters tall. Okay, so let's check and make sure that we actually got it right. So if we go to 
Google and we try to convert between inches and centimeters. Type in 74 inches and we get 187.96. Is that the same that we got here? Yes. Okay. This kind of a program is very useful because you could change this formula right here into a completely different conversion. You could make a program that converts between Fahrenheit and Celsius if you know what the formula is. The only thing that would really change is this part right here. If you wanted to create a program that converts between hours and minutes or days to minutes, there's a conversion factor you'd have to know. And that's all you'd have to change. You'd just change the values right here. And pretty much everything else is the exact same. So hopefully that helps you with the first two programming assignments for this class.